Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, and today we're going to take a look at how to lock down some legacy code. I'm going to do this in a slightly different format. First, I'm going to go through it very quickly just to show how easy it is. And then when it's all done, I'm going to step back and look at some of the theory and whys behind why I'm doing it. So before we do that, let's just take a quick history lesson. Uh, first of all, Code Retreat, if you haven't heard about it, uh, there's a guy, Corey Haynes, who basically was like, if you want to be a craftsman, you've got to do some practice. We should get together and practice. Got a group of his friend together, did this thing where they just practice writing code all day. Um, and you know, deliberate practice is a way to become a better programmer, better craftsman. And so he started doing this, and then he works with this guy, uh, JB. And JB said, well, this is great, but you're writing new code. I need to practice some on legacy code because most of my time is spent in legacy code. So he created this thing called Legacy Code Retreat. And all of this code, because you need some legacy code to start a retreat, is sitting out there on GitHub. All right, so you can just go and click the zip file, download it, which is what I've done. Now, I'm going to do this in the C-sharp version. So I've already added a test project in here just to get us started. OK, so let me start this up and take a look at what it looks like to get this under test. So first, uh, we should run it, right? The first thing I need to do is run it. So I'm going to say new game runner dot, ooh, and I can't do anything with that right now. So I'm going to go into it. And there's a main, oh no, it's public. Oh, don't need a new. Just game runner dot main. And there's some strings, don't really need any of them, so I'm just gonna pass them all, or don't know that I need any of them. Great, so let's run this, and it passes, which means the code runs. So I'm gonna take a quick look at the test result details, uh, and you can see, hey, it's doing all this stuff to the output string. So I need some way of capturing that, so what I'm gonna do is go to the game runner, and look, in fact, I'm gonna do a find in here, for console, uh, it turns out there's quite a lot of consoles, but they're all in this thing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to replace this with console right line without the dot. Now all that's going to do is basically break everything. And now that it's like that, it's going to want a method for this. So I'm going to create that method. And this was the text. And now inside of here, I'm going to do what we originally did, which was write out the text. But this is the place where I can also capture everything that came by. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test. I set this up as a regular preference, but I haven't added approval test yet. So I'm going to go to NuGet, search online for approval tests. And install that. And now in the trivia, I'm also going to want this. So I'm going to add a reference to use the utility section uh, from approval. So I'm going to go in here to packages for approval tests and just grab the utilities. So now, in here, where I write to the console, I can also use my logger, and we'll just say this is a message of the text. All right. So now I'm writing stuff out to the console. I need to capture this on my characterization test. So I'm going to go to my characterization test. Characterization test, of course, characterizing the system, coined from Michael Feathers in his excellent book, Working with Legacy Code. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is, before here, I'm going to var a log. I'm going to tell the logger to log to a string builder. I'm going to do that, and then when it's done, I'm going to approve the log. So approvals that approve the log. And just so I can see all this stuff, 
I'm going to decorate this with a use reporter of a diff reporter. Great. So let's run that. Great. So now I get all of this stuff. I don't even have to look at this stuff. Is it correct? Of course it's correct. It's, it's what the system does. It's legacy code. I get that for free. So I'm just going to move it over and approve the whole thing. Great. And now I can run this again. And if this is functional and I've captured the side effects, which it looks like I have, we should have a passing test. We can see it's not passing, not functional. So I obviously am missing something. It looks like it's doing different things when I run it each time, which makes sense. Most programs aren't supposed to do exactly the same thing every time you start it. There's no user input in this program. So there must be some other factor that's doing it. I go to the game, our game runner, and I can see here that I have this random. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this entire method and extract it as a method. I'm going to call it main2. Then I'm going to go and take this random and I'm going to introduce this as a parameter called random. There's me. And then I'll just inline that. So now I have this random that I'm passing in. It's currently private. I'm going to turn it to public and now I can control my situation. So I'm going to go down here and pass in a new random. The thing is I need my random to be deterministic so I'm going to put it at zero. And of course this isn't going to be main anymore. This is going to be main two. So let's give this a run. It's going to produce different results. Again I don't really have to look at them because the gift of legacy code is that it's going to be consistent. I'm going to use the whole file. I'm going to rerun my tests. And if I've gotten it to be deterministic, it will pass. You can see that it is. It is also running under coverage. So let's take a look and view the test result or the code coverage results. We can see we're up to 92% coverage. I'm going to turn on the highlighting so I can see what's going on here. Right. And it looks like all of it blue is the code coverage for being run in Visual Studio. I have a couple things here that are not being covered. The pop, the sports, a couple of these current players are not coming back. But I'm getting pretty close. And there, there is this method here. This is an interesting method because you can do a search on find usages. And you'll see that it's not being called. So of course, it's impossible for this to be to be used. So I need to do just a couple more of these. Let's add something coming at 10 and let's add something coming at 11 and give it one more run. Good. Again, don't really have to look at this. I can just use the whole file and save that. I'm going to run it one more time. If I view coverage, we can see we're now up to 95%. And again, if I go to the all important game. You're seeing basically all right. I have this still one player count never gets down to zero. Now I'm at the question of if I actually want to solve that or not. So here we are at eight minutes, almost nine minutes. And you can see I've completely locked and covered the code. At this time, I can turn on in crunch and actually start running, knowing that my code is going to be completely covered. For in crunch to work, I have to. Uh, include the approval file into the project. So I'm going to refresh, show all, get that approve file, and include it in the project. And then I can go to InCrunch and enable it and say, yep, run my tests for each other. 
run all my tests, finish. And then in Crunch, we'll just start running these tests over and over as I start refactoring throughout the time. You can go here and actually see in the game, you can see these little green dots now indicating that these are run and covered. And if I was to change something so that it no longer worked, these green dots would become red. So that ran a little bit long. So I'm going to pause here and stop the video. We'll do a second video where we talk about the philosophy and theory behind how we lock this down, reduce it to functional, and characterize the whole tests. I hope you found this useful. I'm Llewellyn Falco, and I approve this demo.